All right, welcome back. Today, we're talking about this. You may recognize it. I made many of you angry because I said to tell the difference between a half a grain of powder difference and charge, you might need to shoot thousands of rounds. You didn't believe me. Today, we're here to prove it. You maybe recognize our dispersion visualizer. Um, let's try and fill this in just a little bit for our 6.5 Creedmoor. Um, to tell you why I think that load development or, or ladder testing is a total myth. So, Top Gun. This is from this book here. Modern Advancements Volume 3. Uh, if you don't have it, get it. Buy it, read it, it's amazing. He has a formula in there where you basically can predict generally how accurate a rifle will be. Formula is that your error equals 0 0.005 times by your kinetic energy divided by your rifle weight plus 0 0.039. If we fill this in for our Creedmoor, uh, it's about 2266 roughly for the kinetic energy. I believe that rifle weighs about 12 pounds and the other important thing is this is not exact. He estimates this is about 72% of your rifle's accuracy is defined by this. If we add all that up, we get 0.35. Let's plug it in, 0.35. And if you watched our last video, we found our aiming error can account for roughly 0.2 inches on the standard deviation. Bullet imbalance in, uh, I believe it was this one, volume one, uh, he gives us a formula for bullet and balance and it's complicated and takes a minute so I'll just tell you. It comes out at 0.215 for this gun. And I know that on average this gun will give me about one inch groups. So if I run this and we're actually pretty close and so this everything else I can maybe plug in 0.1 and we're still in about the one inch area. So we have 0.1 inches or less to work with. So you tell me the kinetic energy of the gun is causing a certain amount of inaccuracy. The aiming error is causing some. Bullet imbalance. We've used up most of our error budget. There's just not much left. But for you to believe me, we're gonna go test this. We're gonna go and shoot a whole bunch of ammo in the desert, and then we're gonna come back, run it through our software, and see if there is a discernible statistical difference. All right, welcome back everybody to sunny Utah. We're here to get dehydration and bring you more science. We've got our favorite slash only 6.5 Creedmoor out here today. Um, and we've got a special treat. I've loaded up 198 rounds of ammo. I have lost two pieces of brass. This half I've loaded with 40.5 grains of RL-16. This half I've loaded with 41.5. So there's a one grain difference in powder between these. We're gonna see if one of these is more accurate than the other. In our first video, I suggested that they probably wouldn't be, um, or that you may not see a difference between small changes in powder, and we made a lot of you very, very angry. If you're one of those people, um, I don't know, you might still be angry. We'll see how it goes. All right, and in case you're wondering, we are shooting these round robin. We're gonna shoot 40.5, followed by 41.5, five shots of each, alternating back and forth until we've gone through the whole box. <laughs> the barrel burned me, it's so hot. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, 
Now this barrel mirage is getting crazy. It's getting a little hard to see. If I just touch that, I will darn near sear my finger. This barrel is roasting. That's it. Okay, we just burned all of our 98 rounds. We've got a whole bunch of five shot groups. First impressions are, I can't say there's a clear winner, which was my hypothesis to start with. We wouldn't be able to tell a difference, but as per usual, we will plug it on the computer, aggregate the groups and do the statistics and get you a real answer. If you want to tune into our next experiment, we're going to be using this, uh, what is this, a cleaning vise, but we made a few little modifications so that it can slide back and forth and recoil so we don't wreck our scopes when we're shooting from this. A lot of you have said our tests were invalid because the guns are more accurate than the shooter or it outshoots me or some something like that. We're going to test that theory out and uh, make sure to subscribe so that you can see when that video comes out. Okay, welcome back. We, we went shooting. We shot a lot of bullets. Um, let's take a look at what it looks like. Uh, we can just load the same image twice because we shot all of them on one paper and now we go through the painstaking process of marking out these targets. So we do three inch scale here and then we want to find the same one. Where did it go? There it is. All right, three inch scale. Okay, let's click on all the bullet holes. Okay, we painstakingly clicked on every bullet hole and we've got our combined scatter plots where it takes all the different groups and merges them together based on the aim point and stacks them up. And you can see they look pretty similar. And if we come down, we do some statistics. People's 0.2, that does not meet our threshold of P's 0.05. This is using the Man Whitney test. Learn about this in our first video. And the the stats agrees with our, our model that we came up with that there's just no room in our air budget. It's not there. I know this might hurt your feelings. It hurt my feelings. I have a lot of these. I got a big stack. They're all pointless. It's painful, I know. But I wish you well. Greg, this is a disaster at the ending. Edit all of this out. Thanks for joining us. Like and subscribe. We've got more exciting things coming.